Pelleggi Technical Services, your computers and electronics concierge service. Welcome back. Today we have in front of us an HP Pavilion 500C60. This is a brand new machine running Windows 8.1, which the owner of the machine does not want to use. They actually want to use Windows 7 Professional on this. However, the machine came with the standard version of Windows 8.1, not the professional edition. So downgrading is going to be a little bit different with this machine. Normally, um, if you have the professional edition, you can downgrade on your own. However, if you don't have the professional edition, you have to buy a install CD and do it the manual way. So we're going to get together and do that today. Uh, I do have everything I need to the side here to do that, which I'll show you in a second. But first, I wanted to show you this computer. This is running an AMD A6 5200 APU, which is running at 2.0 gigahertz. It features the Radeon 8400 graphics, which is built into the actual chip. Uh, it does have 8 gigabytes of RAM, since this is a 64-bit edition of Windows. Um, it's a really basic machine. There's nothing special to it. However, when it was handed to me by the owner, they gave me this which is a regular laptop power supply. And I thought, this is a desktop computer. Why would you need that? Then I turned it around and noticed there's no power supply in it, which I thought was very strange. And then if you look at the bottom over here, you can see that there's actually a DC input jack right on the motherboard, which made me go, huh? Never seen that before. So I'm gonna pause this video, open this case up, and show you the inside and see why I think this is so interesting. And here we have the innards. And as you can see, yes, there is no power supply up here. You just have an optical drive, a one terabyte Western Digital Blue hard drive. Uh, there's a case fan in the back, there isn't even one in the front. And your little tiny motherboard. This, uh, this doesn't even look like this is a micro ATX. This looks like one of those um, UATX boards, those Pico ATX or whatever they're called. Uh, yeah, this thing is, wh why did they put this in such a large case? This is a minimal system. You don't need such a big case, but I digress. We do have two memory slots, which is great. I can up upgrade this with another 8 gigabyte chip if I want. We have a very, very tiny fan and uh, heat sink for that processor. I honestly, that's one of the smallest... Uh, um, fan and uh, uh, one of the smallest cooling units I've seen in a long time for a processor which also made me go huh okay you also notice there's no PCI PCIe or anything like that in here they just have one of these small PCIe card slots like you'd have in a laptop um, this does have Wi-Fi built in it which is great but that's basically it for the inside of this machine. I I didn't know what to say when I opened this up. I thought that was the craziest thing. I'm used to building computers that are big and heavy with you know 500 watt power supplies and multiple hard drives and four memory banks and you know video cards, all this stuff. This thing's got nothing in it. Uh, you, you can hook up two monitors to it, and it does have USB 3.0 in the in the back here, but. Man, that's as basic as you can get it. So what I'm going to do now is put the cover back on this. We're going to hook it up to my monitor. And I'm going to show you the processes of going ahead and putting Windows 7 on this machine. Now there are a couple things to point out here. I have some stuff set aside that we need to make this happen. First of all, I went into the computer and I backed up the recovery partition, which was a 16 gigabyte partition, to this external hard drive. That way, if something goes wrong and worst case scenario, I have to revert to Windows 8.1, I have the stuff here to do that. Also, we have the Windows 8.1 64-bit installation CD. Now, this is actually a copy. You don't get media with these computers anymore. So what you do get is a link that you can go to Microsoft's website and download an ISO file and burn the ISO file to the CD. In this case, it's a DVD. Um, that's just a clean version of Windows. It doesn't have any of the stuff that came with HP. 
I may need to use that if the recovery option doesn't work, I have to do it manually. So I have that as a backup to the backup. We also have a USB jump drive here, which contains all the Windows 7 drivers for this build. It also has uh, several utilities like the antivirus program I use, the malware program, all the uh, stuff like that on there. And I do that to keep it easy for me to do the installation. I don't have to go online and download all that stuff later. Plus we have the most important part, the Windows 7 professional installation disk. This is actually meant for refurbishing a computer. There is a code underneath this disk, which of course I have covered for security reasons, but that uh, certificate of authenticity will get stuck to the side of the computer case and the code that's on this disk will get installed in there. Um, that's pretty straightforward, but these are the two most important parts of this. This is what's going to make Windows 7 work. The other two things are just to have a backup because God forbid something happens and I can't get this Windows 7 to go on here the right way. I need to revert back to the other system. All right, we got the camera facing my monitor. You can actually see my reflection a little bit. Hello. So we're going to turn this on and uh, this doesn't have a BIOS, this has a UF UEFI system, so this is gonna boot straight into Windows unless we hit the F10 key. So as I turn this on, I'm gonna hit the key and the menu should come up. And then we hit the F, uh, escape key to get into the startup menu. And then we get to the um, system configuration. Now what we have to do is, is turn off the secure boot option. This allows us to change the configuration here. So we'll go into here, I'm sure, oh yes. Now we have to turn secure boot off and turn legacy boot on, accept, and then we need to go into the um, boot order, and then we need to find the CD-ROM. Well, it turns out you can't boot to a DVD drive on this computer. You have to have a USB device to do that. I don't know why they did that. The secure boot option is uh, kind of a pain in the neck in my opinion. I'm sure there's a reason why they're doing it this way now, but for a system uh, builder standpoint, it's kind of hard now. So what I'm doing is uh, on my other computer behind me here, I have the Windows 7 disk that I'm making into an ISO file. Then we're gonna take that ISO file and we're using a tool that I downloaded from Microsoft's website to convert the ISO to a USB bootable drive that I'll plug into the front of this computer using a second jump drive that I have. Hmm. Let's see how that gets along. Okay, we have success. After a few minutes of trying this out, apparently you have to download the ISO file from Microsoft's website, which won't work for me because I have a specific version of Windows we're using. So I had to find another piece of software which would allow me to take that ISO file and burn it to a USB drive. If you go on Google and you search Windows DVD to ISO or anything like that, you're not going to get the right program. You need just a simple ISO to USB device. Um, and that's what we did. Uh, the other thing I had to do was, is, uh, which I covered earlier in the video, you need to go in, change the secure boot option to legacy. I also had to go into the boot order and disable the Windows Secure Boot option and move the USB hard drive option to the top. Once I plugged my thumb drive in, rebooted the computer, it came right into this setup. So this is exactly what we want. This is, of course is obviously the Windows 7 setup. We're just going to go through this. Uh, I'm not going to let this video run the whole time because this takes a couple hours. Um, what I will do is just get through the startup here, let it go, I'll pause the camera, and when it gets to the next major point, we'll, we'll re reconvene the video then. So this is actually going to be a complete new version. Now there are multiple uh, partitions on this drive. We can actually go ahead and delete all these partitions because Windows 7 is a little bit different than Windows 8 as far as that's concerned. So we should be able to go in here and delete all these partitions. Now like I said, I already have everything on this computer backed up that we needed. In fact, one of the things was taking the recovery uh, partition off of this drive 
by making a backup of it, I was actually able to take that 16 gig partition off, which is pretty nice that they give you that option. But once you do that, you have to make sure you keep that, you know, device put away someplace safe. So if you ever have to back this up again, you, you'll still have that because you won't have it on your, your drive anymore. But now we have the full 931.5 gigabytes free. We're going to create a new partition. And then next. And then this is just going ahead and copy all the files. This is the part that's going to take the most time. Um, once this is done, it's going to load into my desktop. Um, I should be able to put the key in at that point and then we'll start doing the drivers. So I'm going to cut the video here and we'll come back to this once we're at that stage. Just wanted to give a little bit of an update here. Um, as you can see, it's complete an installation. We're actually running off of the computer's system now. No longer are we on the USB drive. Uh, the computer actually got to the installing updates part, rebooted itself, and then came up into this. So it's going to do this one more time and then hopefully we should be into our desktop. All right, we did get to the point now where we have to set up the user's information in this computer. So I'm just gonna briefly cut the video and do that to you know, keep this secure. I don't wanna give any of the user's information out. So what you missed is, is I put the user's name in, the PC name. I also gave it a password and set up the hint for the password. This is actually just for the default Windows login this computer is actually going on a domain once it gets to the workplace, so it's going to have its own credentials at that point, but I do need to set up a user account on the native um, computer here. Now it's going to ask me for the product key, which again, I'm going to cut the video and edit that into the background while you're not watching. Um, this is also a good test to make sure that the key that I actually got with the computer works. If this doesn't work, then I have to call up Microsoft and they have to verify it manually. Let's hope it works. All right, looks like the key worked a treat. So we're just going to go ahead and just continue filling out the rest of this stuff. Um, this is just pretty st um, standard window stuff here. And the time's right on and everything. That's great. Surprisingly, that was actually a pretty easy install. Um, it actually took a lot less time than I thought because I'm using the USB drive instead of a DVD. I know that had a lot to do with it. Also, getting into the actual, get, getting the computer to actually boot to that drive was a pain in the neck. Um, you know, I'm used to, I'm used to being able to put a CD into the drive, going into BIOS, and then just changing the BIOS option to boot from the CD-ROM drive. The secure boot stuff. Yeah, I know there's a reason for it. It's to prevent people from sticking something in your computer and booting it without your knowledge. But, you know, in all honesty, with the internet today, you can just go ahead and pull up Google and learn how to do that and take someone's computer and get into the secure boot and change the settings anyway. So in my opinion, it doesn't really change much unless, of course, you have a, a password protection on your BIOS. But uh, right now, we're in the desktop. Uh, you can't see the start bar. It's just off the bottom of the camera here. But... Um, this this doesn't have anything installed as far as drivers go so there's no internet on it right now I just have the basic resolution on the desktop so I'm going to go ahead and plug the other USB drive that I have in here and upload all the drivers and uh, basically just finish configuring this PC there really isn't much more to this video that's interesting so I'm just gonna leave it at that right now if you like what you saw please click the like button also, if you want to see more videos, don't forget to subscribe. And thank you for watching.